You're listening to the podcast on jasonsolomons.com and I'm delighted to be joined by Wit Stillman who has come fresh from promoting his new film Love and Friendship which opens in the UK this weekend. Congratulations on the film, Wit. Thanks very much. Uh, it, it's a tremendously funny film as well, first of all. Would you bill this as a comedy? Definitely a comedy and I think it was mischaracterized initially as a romance drama or something like that. No, there there is a tiny moment of drama and a, and a bit of romance but mostly comedy and that, that was the conception of it as, as well at the inception i mean it's a jane austen adaptation of course but you've kind of upped the banter i suppose yes i mean this is her most purely comic piece it was published as lady S- susan she didn't publish it in her own day because i think she thought it was too scandalous um and it probably was too scandalous um the 18th century differed from the 19th century uh the end of the 18th century there was sort of permission to be scandalous. And as the 19th century dawned, uh, she sort of changed her point of view. It's interesting to, to me seeing that cuspish sort of fin de siècle into the new siècle. Uh, your film career and your films have sort of done the same thing. You kind of got the last days of disco. You kind of got the uh, the end of an era, I suppose, in, in, in Barcelona and uh, the, 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 those 90s movies. Have things changed? Did the 90s and, and, and the, the, the noughties and the new century, do they mirror in any way what was going on for Austin? Well, for me, it does. I've gone into the um, films rated U now, so uh, I'm in the my my neo-Victorian era. <laughs> the prudishness has kind of entered. Well, I, I prefer to say prudishness. <laughs> the, 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 there's a lot of uh, jokes in, in 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 love and friendship as well, uh, and the title I- I- intrigues me. Where did you come up with that? Is that was that taken from the text? I hated the title Lady Susan, which wasn't her title, and so I grabbed um, a title she put in an early story. Um, she misspelled friendship, but it was love and friendship. All right. How could you misspell friendship? Putting the I and E the wrong way around. Yes, it's very easy to misspell. That's one of the prime words for misspelling. And and um, so all her writing was wonderfully misspelled and ungrammatical, but um, people then protest saying that, that spelling hadn't been standardized. It wasn't that she was misspelling it. It just it was non-standard. It, it does remind you that um, she may be a friend, but Lady Susan herself, played by Kate Beckinsale, is more of a fiend than friend. Yes, she's a charming fiend, and the good thing is she has a fiend friend um, in the film played by Chloe Sevigny, and I think it has a more sympathetic dynamic than in Last Days of Disco, because there it was a little bit bitter. It was the uh, Kate character constantly undermining the Chloe character. Here they're allies and, and, and colleagues. Yeah, they're kind of, you know, they're thick as thieves, and uh, the husband, played by uh, Stephen Fry, um, he doesn't want them to see each other, and you can, you can sort of see why. They, they, they sow mischief wherever they go. And they're also fantasizing about his near death uh, whenever they can, you know. That will the next Gaudi attack end more favorably? <laughs> the, um, there seems to be a lot of that uh, from Kate Beckinsale. So there's one sort of says marriage is supposed to be for life, and she says, well, not in my, not in my experience. Uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a woman with whom it is not advisable to come into contact. Yeah, she's playing uh, the mortality card pretty hard. <laughs> Which I, I suppose was, was kind of current. I mean, when men would, would die of, of, please God, gout or war normally in that time. I think those those thoughts still pass through people's heads. Mm. When you when you make a film like this, and it is very funny, very witty all the way through, uh, and and elegant in its wit as well, you have to follow the, uh, the 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 dialogue. Which these days, you know, in you know, I don't know how much dialogue is in your average blockbuster, but I can just imagine the sentences do not spread beyond much beyond one line. Uh, yours, they get great speeches and great lines. It, was it easy? An actor seemed to be very gifted at delivering this stuff. Well, it was kind of a bait and switch in our film because we had a script that was as you described with a lot of the dialogue a lot of the sort of clever Waldian back and forth but then when we got to the shoot we discovered some comic actors such as Tom Bennett who plays Sir James Martin and um, I started writing scene after scene for him so this sort of sketch comedy world enters into our Jane Austen world and I think it's good because it varies it so there's not I hope there's not too much of any one thing no, there isn't. And it is interesting you mentioned sketch comedy as well, because you think with something like a, a costume drama that is that, 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 that there's not much room for improv or something. But you're you're maybe you didn't improv, but you were writing on the hoof on the day. Yeah, I was writing for them, um, and so all the words were at one point or another set down on paper. But the actors were doing so much with them that was beyond what I could have imagined. And then I was trying to incorporate that into the script. Well, it certainly, uh, it certainly shines through uh, as well. Did you, with, with certainly with Kate uh, Beckinsale's delivery, did you work to, to her? Because, when, you know, to be honest, she, she's been a fine actress for many years, but has been a bit lost in the whole vampire and the, 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 the Dracula things, what she was doing in her wolf suits, wherever she's been. 
No, I have to say it's all her doing. I mean, the first thing I saw her in was Cold Comfort Farm, mm. and this is essentially just that updated to a different character, mm. but um, she really has all this uh, natively. Yeah, no, I, I saw that Stella Gibbons thing was the first thing I saw her in uh, as well. Maybe it was the first thing she did. That's probably why. Well, she was in Much Ado About Nothing, but that was just looking pretty and smiling and singing and things like that. In this case, in, in Cold Comfort Farm, really, she was channeling uh, Lady Susan already. And there's marvellous lines in here, like, facts are horrid things. Yes, um, I thought they were taken directly from the Jane Austen, and I went back and looked, and most of them are slightly simplified from the Jane Austen. So it is Jane Austen, but um, for instance, in, in the line in the film, um, it's a pity you married Mr. Johnson, too old to be governable, too young to die. In the case of the Jane Austen, she had put sort of three things, too old to be three things, and then... To, Three, three, three more things. So it's sort of simplifying things, make them, making it faster, but it was all in the Austin. Mm. Well, maybe maybe she got better as a writer, you know, do a nice ternary period at some point, and then you can ruin it, then ruin the joke. When you're, you're writing for good joke deliverers there, in, uh, you know, in, and, and your own, the modern sensibility is for da 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 then getting get the joke and hitting the punchline. No, I mean, I think she, her writing was brilliant in this. So it's, it's not that well um, known, I think, because it was published after... Her main novels had already been discovered and already in inexpensive editions being read by everyone. Um, but also it's it's not read because it's sort of cumbersome, um, epistolary style. Um, but within it is some of her finest and funniest writing. So the writing is really good, I have to say. So she has more time and space to, to elaborate things than you can do in a film. In a film, it has to be quick. Epistolary is interesting, isn't it? Because we've had great films based on epistolary novels, like Liaison Dangereuse, and there was a sort of up, up, updating of that to kind of modern New York uh, a few years ago. One would think that now epistolary would done by you could be done by emails and texts and all of that. Was there was there a point when you kind of juggle when you were adapting it to set it back in? It was it always going to be set in the in the period it was? Or how to get the epistolary nature of it over? Well, the problem is geographical, um, because they're sort of geographical opposites in our sort of. Um, um, comedies, people have to be within earshot. They have to be, you know, hearing and, and, and replying. And in the epistolary novels, they have to be far enough away to make it plausible they're writing a letter. So occasionally they can leave a mash note in the same great house, um, you know, leave a letter for someone. But that would get tiresome. So they essentially have to be distant. So in this adaptation, we had to invent characters to be nearby to be hearing the bomo. Because there's, there's people delivering letters by hand. There was, you don't want to wait too long for letters. There was, there's a wonderful scene with someone reading a letter out. Uh, James Fleet, of course, is brilliant at this sort of thing, reading a letter out with punctuation and all. I mean, some of the structural concerns led to some funny characters. So because um, her friend Alicia is so far away, we had to have a character listening to what Lady Susan was saying nearby. So she has this exploited, um, impoverished friend who becomes her unpaid companion, Mrs. Cross. And Mrs. Cross turns into this horrible psychophant. Whatever she says, it's decidedly this, decidedly that. Very liberal, decidedly liberal. I wonder, I mean, people have always talked about you as a sort of man out of time slightly, you know, when you were doing a Metropolitan in Barcelona. Uh, always very funny as well. And Last Days of Disco has that kind of end of an era kind of element to it. You you seem very much in time now, I must say. You've probably caught up with yourself now. But did you think that, would you like to have lived in the Regency period? Would you would, would you like to have been you know, writing letters, handwritten letters backwards and forth? Well, as Kate Beckinsale said once yesterday, I would have liked to go for a visit, but I'd like to be able to come back. <laughs> and so I feel the same way. I'd like to go for a visit, maybe a long visit, but I'd like to be able to come back. And Love and Friendship is out in the UK this weekend. Wes Tillman, thanks very much. Thank you very much.